I trade spot and futures on BYDFi and if you want to set up an account now, send me a message once you've created your account with your username and UID on Telegram and I'll put you into a randomly selected prize draw. I've got 10, 20 and $50 gift cards to give out which basically go against your trading fees, giving you free trading fees basically until the gift cards run out. BYDFi. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at Bitcoin, Ethereum and the overall market, whether that be Dixie and a bit of Nasdaq, right? So um, uh, there's a lot of concern in the market at the moment because we've started to see for the first time a uh, potential downside. And uh, this is the whole thing about people getting complacent. You know, the people on the Patreon, they're more than uh, aware of this. I've been, I've been sort of concerned about the market since December, really, um, about how much further it has to run. We call it the train dodge on the Patreon. In fact, there's a Patreon live stream tonight if anyone wants to join. This is £7.50 a month. Link's in the description below. But yeah, I always refer to it as the train dodge. So when you're on borrowed time, especially with something like Bitcoin, where the money flow index is reaching a very significant peak, and this was all the way back in December um, last year. The 4th of December, it reached this, this absolute peak. It's not the highest it's ever been. It's the fourth highest it's ever been. And what were the other highest pe uh, peaks? This one over here, 2017, bubble pop, bear market. 2019, uh, bull market peak, uh, as far as the uh, beginning of the bull market peak, which I think is similar to this. Um, and then this one, which was the 300% rally into Bitcoin, where it then did uh, actually go on to make a new local high shortly after, I say shortly, within the year. Um, but uh, this led into an alt season. Either way, this was the 30% pullback. This was a 60% pullback. This was like an 85% pullback. What's this one going to be, is the question. And is it going to be from here, or do we go on a little higher? So because I think this is similar to this and again i'm not saying it's the same it's a similar this is the beginning of a new bull market this is the beginning of a bull market uh, the liquidity in bitcoin was a lot less allowing for the move to be larger and faster and more significant and um, the, the 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 volume on bitcoin is a lot more at this stage you know, despite what people might think there's way more bitcoin trading going on here than there ever was over here um, you know, it was, it's, it's just fact, all right? It's just fact. It, it, you know, this was not a popular time for Bitcoin. Um, you know, it was still a very small market. It's still a small market now, but it was a much smaller market around here. Either way, I feel like these two are similar. And so for what we're going to see at this stage now, we might see continuation. Um, we might even see continuation of alts. But what we are probably looking at is a deeper more longer drawn out consolidation after what has been a decent long lasting rally <clears throat> whether we consolidate from this particular peak or we go on to make it a new high which i personally think is more likely i think we go on to you know to get closer towards forty-eight thousand before we do that it's up to you uh, i've been saying for a while what's the risk to reward are you into new positions uh, or are you wanting to take new positions or are you just exiting positions on the way up which is what i've been doing for well two months really um uh, and yeah my my tether is 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 the largest position and it has been since december right so um let's have a think about money flow index again boring old stuff if i think this is similar so what we're looking at right now, what we see is a massive peak around 95 and then a lower high around you know, 93. Forget the numbers, just look at the formation. Um, and, with, uh, and, and once we got that, what do we see on price action? Where was the price action? So the first peaks were here, here, and then here. So it was the bearish divergence, two drives of which has caused the peak. This is not uncommon for the money flow index money flow index is not very good at spotting absolute bottoms it's better at spotting absolute tops but it's not perfect the, normally the best way to spot a top or a bottom while using the money flow index is through a divergence whether that's bullish divergence as we saw here low higher low marking the absolute low or, you know or basically close to it before the rally or this one low higher low marking the absolute bottom before a significant rally, and, um, and, and, and so on, right? <laughs> and so on and so on. So, excuse me, I've still got a bit of a cold. But with that, um, you know, do we think about this being a high and a lower high 
uh, marking the absolute top. Well, you could do. I mean, it's there, it's present, isn't it? So if that is the case, um, are we expecting something like that to occur? If we are, what we would be looking for would be a weekly candle body closure higher than the candle bodies, not the wicks, the candle bodies, I would say, which is basically 44,000, which is more or less where we are right now. It's Friday. We've still got a few more days before this closes. Uh, and are we going to find that bearish divergence on the weekly money flow index and obviously on the RSI? Because um, if we are, it brings back memories, doesn't it, of this and that. So that is no surprise. We've been thinking about this for a while, haven't we? And maybe this is it. Um, even yesterday, I was talking about you know the risk to reward. What's the risk to reward? Not great. The, the risk is higher than the reward. Does that mean that you want to make the trade, even though it's likely that we do go up first? Um, I would say probably not, which is, again, where I've been exiting positions for a couple of months, <clears throat> taking profit on these rips, because you know, whatever you believe about the overall market, hodling is fine, but if you're trading, recognize that this is the beginning of a bull market, and it's unlikely to make a, a new all-time high. And yes, the halving is coming around the corner, which might keep it propped up. Uh, again, you know, just to reiterate all the things I've been saying, there's a, there's lots of reasons to be bullish, but the market often prices these things in. We've got the halving, bullish. We've got Feds potentially lowering rates, bullish. We've got ETF, bullish. But these are all probably going to be buy the rumor, sell the news. I know that the halving often is. Halving always has a sell-off after the event. So we've got three buy the rumor, sell the news events. The events haven't actually kicked in yet, so... You would expect those to be sold, right? Because I believe them to be priced in, right? So with that, it does think I do think that actually, yeah, let's let's just just chill out. And again, you know, for the Patreon members, this to, this comes as no nothing new. I've been saying this for weeks, months, even. You know, just just take that profit, take that profit. If you're hodling, fine. But if you're trading, take that profit. Don't hold out for the highest targets. Be grateful for all the profit that you've been making. You know, over these last several months. So, um, Ethereum uh, never even got the breakout, really. Um, we were looking for a breakout beyond the 2,400. We didn't get that. <clears throat> and so, yeah, Ethereum could still rally on, or it may have already peaked. Not really particularly sold on this idea for, uh, for Ethereum. Currently, we are still above the major support, which is this bad boy here, the 2,150. Again, you know, that's, that's okay. At the moment, we're working on a spinning top, so uh, this is like a, an indecisive candle body. And yes, uh, there is a trend signal on the weekly as well, which is technically bullish. So again, I'm not here to say what's exactly going to happen. Um, I think discussing the risk to reward is probably the best thing right now. And as of right this very moment in time, the risk to reward is not, is not great. Although the probability of further upside is more likely in the very short term time frames. The risk to reward for gains to losses is not great either. So it's up to you. And <clears throat> yeah, I've been very clear about my strategy, at least on the Patreon anyway. Best thing to do is to take these profits, or at least a, a large portion of these profits, and redeploy them after a longer drawn out consolidation. And are we going to consolidate for a longer time? I expect we will at some point this year. Uh, and then it's at the bottom of that consolidation that we will reach a significant low that will lead into a nice big super pump um, later on, either this year or into next year. It's the, probably the case. Probably the case. So that's Bitcoin. That's Ethereum. Again, you know, upside is probably more likely uh, in the very short term timeframes, but the risk to reward is not amazing. Let's have a look at the Dixie. So the Dixie on the four hourly fast approaching its 200 exponential and simple moving average which is a death cross retest on that four hourly that's fine on the daily um we've got a death cross retest just a little bit further above us um basically like one cent above us really not much further on really so we could be getting rejected any minute now or within one percent um, i would be looking for the rejection on that one so look that's the dixie the, Di the dixie is likely to get its rejection around those areas right within a one percent range of where we are right now and then yeah, you know, whether it makes a, a a a lower high and a lower low is is a different story, and the chances of it being rejected is quite high. So we would we would be looking for all markets to respond nicely to that. I've been seeing a few people tweeting about the Nasdaq today. Oh, the Nasdaq, the Nasdaq is dying. That might be the case. So let's have a look. Nasdaq. Have a look at the Nasdaq. <coughs> 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 
excuse me, I've got the lurgy. Not particularly well. Right. Money flow index, peak and a peak. So as far as the daily is concerned, there is a significant peak there. Okay, where are we going to look to bounce on this one? Based on the daily, we'd be looking to bounce probably around this area, <coughs> which corresponds to this top as well. So there's a support that exists roughly around this area. <coughs> 15,080 or 900 thereabouts. Okay, so there's a bounce on the daily uh, pointing around there. That would correspond to the daily of uh, the of the Dixie. But what about the four hourly? Is the four hourly going to bounce anywhere soon? Well, if the if the, if we're going to bounce on the four hourly, we should be bouncing around now. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we've got a little bit further to go. So there is a chance for a decent bounce based on the four hourly and on the daily, um, which is within a two and a half percent range from where we are right now. So whether we bounce immediately is a different story. Um, there is a bounce due. Is it going to make a new high? I don't know. It's, uh, you know, I can't say. But there is a bounce due. Based on the Dixie rejection, based on the NASDAQ, based on Bitcoin, and based on the most likely possibility of which direction we're going to go, um, I think a bounce is more likely. Um, S&P. Um, so S&P is broken down below its major um, destination target, really. So this was like a very, very significant peak. It came close to a new all-time high, didn't it? And was front run. How shocking. How predictable. So a, uh, a front run target of the previous high. Are we going to get a bounce on this one? So we're just d uh, dipping now down below the um, the Bollinger Band itself. So this offers a further downside, probably a, uh, a bigger than the Nasdaq. If it looks like this, it might just get carried with the Dixie. But uh, yeah, we're looking for a 3% move here on the S&P. Uh, opposed to the 2.5% move on the Nasdaq. Fair enough. So downside, uh, it, you know, is available over here, right, for stocks. Um, so it's, it's, it's absolutely not clear at all, which is, again, yeah, why I am re trying to reiterate that, you know, profit-taking should have been and currently is still the, the best strategy. This is not the parabolic phase of crypto. The money flow index on the dailies would not allow for parabolic moves. Um, it's just too hot already and it's been too hot for a while. So, you know what I'm doing. You know what I've done. I'm happy with that. You know, people call you paper hands, don't they? But really, the only paper in my hands is fat cash. But... Outside of that, like I have plenty of hodl bags. They're all sitting around staking, and uh, with that, it's a completely different strategy altogether. So that, don't misinterpret what I say. There's so many ways to play any market, crypto especially. Trading is one, bot trading is another, buy, hold, and stake is another, the hodl uh, situation. That is fine. And... Uh, for the most part, I play all three. So look, um, that is that. There is most likely going to be another attempt at higher on Bitcoin. Um, I don't think it's uh, reached its actual peak yet. But this week should likely seal its fate with that uh, bearish divergence on the money flow index. Uh, giving us a very, 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 very likely um, carbon copy of this environment here. And... If that is the case, we'll be looking to retrace 30 to perhaps maybe 60% over a prolonged period of time. Um, and it's only at the time where that has finally finished that redeploying in mass um, is going to yield very large, significant and quite quickly um, produced gains. That, that's, that's how I see this market. I hope people disagree. That's fine. It's not about me being right. It's about me explaining my strategy, what I have had planned for a long time, uh, and now it's time to implement that. We all want everything to keep going up every day. That's what we want. Of course we want that. But that's not the nature of anything. Nothing goes up forever. Nothing goes down forever. Well, I suppose some things do go down forever. Uh, but uh, but yeah, nothing goes in a straight line. And as far as the beginnings of a new bull market is concerned, this one has been quite long-lasting. 
And so you would expect a consolidation to be at least, well, so, you know, in all fairness, you, you'd, you would expect it to be the same amount of time, but I'll, I'll probably be looking for a, a, a six-month consolidation around, you know, between four to eight months, to be honest, around that period. So I'll, get, I'll say roughly six months from when it starts. And, and that could be quite painful. And throughout that period, you know, you're likely to see all kinds of other things happen because if there is a spot ETF, then uh, BlackRock are not going to be wanting to buy high. They're going to want to buy low, and they have the power to FUD the market, and they probably will, and that market will be FUDded and FUDded and FUDded until uh, the price of Bitcoin is lower than it should be. So as much as I say, oh, it'll last X amount of time, it'll last until the consolidation is finished in a natural way, or it bottoms out at a significant place. Now, the most obvious are the lines on this chart. Obviously, 38,000 is a support. You'd expect a reaction around there anyway. Uh, we've got 31,800 thereabouts. You'd expect a reaction around there. Uh, we've also got 28,000, which you'd also expect a reaction from there. And then beyond that, you've also got uh, 200 exponentials sitting at 26,600. Uh, so there's so many places to think about buying incrementally on the way down. Uh, and just to, just to get it straight, I expect Bitcoin to make a new all-time high anyway. So you could play the Michael Saylor game and buy every single top on this market and still end up, you know, with fruitful gains over the next few years, which is exactly the, the that is exactly the time frame, you know, within a couple of years, new all time highs. So look, it's, it's, it's completely up to you how you decide to play this market. My expectations have been hopefully quite clear about it um, and uh, we'll leave it with there. So in summary, same as yesterday. The same as a couple of days ago, when I said this is the, probably going to be the last pump before the drop. The day before the drop happened. That's right. I said it. Um, we're still in that week where the new top is likely to be generated and the lower high is likely to be generated. So with that, we should probably be, you know, not afraid, but strategic in how we decide we're going to move forward. Anyway, I'll leave it with you there. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a nice day. Maybe I'll see you on the Patreon later. Links in the description below. Take it easy.